In this video, I want to talk about the concept of a reverse ETL. It's relatively new, it's a different approach, and I want to show you why you might want to use this and how you can start thinking about it. Let's jump right in. Hi there, my name is Ruben and I'm a data and decision strategist and I help companies use data to make better decisions. So one of the things we have to do, of course, is collect data, store it, and then make it available for reporting and dashboards, visualization. Now, the historical way of doing this has always been to collect data from all the sources, doesn't matter where it comes from, the web, mobile apps, paid advertising, paid channels, offline sources like your CRM, maybe financial data from like a bookkeeping software. So we pull it in like vacuum, right? We, we vacuum everything and then we store it into a, some kind of central uh, data warehouse, like an Amazon Redshift, a BigQuery. And then from there, we might visualize it. We might build dashboards. Now that data is centralized, we can join it, we can combine it, we can clean it, we can transform it. And of course the ETL process, the extract, transform, load was created for this very basic purpose to pull data from point A your CRM and to store it in point B, your data warehouse. Now, along the way, we got new things, things like segment, particle, the CDPs of the world, where it does the same thing. It pulls from a bunch of data sources, but then it will also send that to a bunch of other destinations, not just your data warehouse. So you have this data flow and you have a data going out to other places, not just the data warehouse. So you have the central thing that collects and sends data. So now we have this idea of a reverse ETL, which is starting to come out and it really is just a data pipeline. The term might be you know, new, but it's just another way of looking at a data pipeline of where data is going and where it needs to go. So in the reverse ETL model, we actually start with the data warehouse. So in our case, in the first example, we're pulling everything to the warehouse, we're storing it, and then we're reporting it. And then the reverse ETL comes in and says, actually, let's send it to other places. Now, the reason why this is somewhat new, it may not sound that uh, interesting, is that typically a data warehouse has been seen as a final destination. Once the data is there, you're done with it. And if you need to send it other places, Places. Let's say you need to send it to uh, your CRM, you need to send it to paid channels like Facebook and Google, you should have done that beforehand, right? You should have done that before it arrives because once it arrives here, it is done. But the new tools we're seeing for this reverse ETL are saying, actually, let's actually take it from our data warehouse, let's make that a starting point and let's send it out. Now, let me give you some examples with actual vendors so you can see what it, what it looks like. So let me uh, hop over here to my computer. And what we want to understand is two options, two main players in the space we can think about it. So one is high touch, one is census. And if you see the flow of the data is the data warehouse is here. So maybe you spend a lot of time centralizing your data, moving data into a data warehouse can be straightforward, sometimes easier. And now from there, you can send it to other places. So from your data warehouse, you write some code, effectively SQL. And then from there, it gets converted into the right destinations, right? The Salesforce, the HubSpots, the intercoms, the Facebooks. So it becomes a much simpler implementation because you can focus on centralizing all your data in the data warehouse, again, straightforward forward. And from there, you can integrate it to a bunch of APIs. It does a, a few other things, right? It, it kind of tells you when data has been sync or not sync, what has changed since the last uh, push, fail rows, things like that, things you might expect here. And then of course, when we look at the integrations, it's the typical things you might see, the CRMs, the email providers, Amplitude, Brace, Asana, interesting enough. And there's, you know, 20, 30, 40 implementations here that can plug in. You have all your data centralized and you send it over. This would really replace something like a segment. Instead of sending to segment or instead of having to have segment, you might I want to start here. Of course, segment is a destination here. So maybe segment is a starting point as well. Nonetheless, the reverse ETL model uh, provides an interesting case study, right? If you look at a census and a competitor, same idea, right? Based on SQL, you pull from a data warehouse and you send it elsewhere. And I'll give you an example, you know, working with a client right now where they have a lot of offline data that doesn't integrate nicely into a CDP. What we can do instead is centralize everything in data warehouse that solves a lot of their problems by just being able to report data from a centralized place. And then if you want to pull it out, to external partners like Facebook ads, we can use something like this to pull it. So instead of writing those custom APIs, we can pull it from our data warehouse and send it over to a bunch of different places. And same thing, common integrations you'll see here. So the concept is interesting. I'm not sure how well this players will stand out, to be honest. I, I think a, a lot of this functionality will be captured by other players. For example, ETL tools now sometimes do this, right? Like you look at a tool like uh, like Cdata or Skyvia, they can do a read, they can pull data from a source, like a CRM. They can also write data into a source source, like a CRM. So not quite clear how much of these players would actually stand out on their own, but nonetheless, it's an interesting concept to, to think about that you can pull from your data warehouse already clean and stored and send it to APIs, not just report on it. 
Finally, I think that the companies that will benefit the most from this kind of model is perhaps startups or companies that have done a lot of work on their data warehouse that it's easy for them to build a data warehouse. They don't want to build custom APIs, custom integrations like Segment. They want to pull from it into destination. So something to think about, I thought I want to bring you some you know, cutting edge approaches. And this is one that I've been seeing in the past few months. And that's all I have for today. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe here on YouTube. And there's also a few links in the description that I want to point out to you as I always do. First is my weekly newsletter, The Growth Needle. Similar ideas to this one, but in a written format. Second is The Data Mirage. My first book has been out for a few months now. It's available everywhere. You can buy books, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Chapters. So check that out. Third is Twitter. This is where I post bite-sized insights on a more frequent basis. So those three links are in the description. Make sure to check them out. Finally, in the comment section below, add your thoughts, questions, impressions of the reverse ETL model. I would love to read them and hear about them and there'll always be some videos to check out related videos that i think you might find helpful as well until next time talk soon